everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are continuing to work on microcosms, cosmos, sorry, um, from Chabella. And this is page two, and this is page three, um, and so I'm going to share with you what I've done. So these um, images that are going to be on these six by six panels are from the six by six collection. So I've chosen these, I just think they're so pretty to feature. And then what you see in the background is uh, paper from the 12 by 12 collections and I've just taken a one and split it between, uh, or two and, and shared the images across. I just think it makes it a little bit more interesting since my flap design is gonna be so simple. Um, I wanted a color block on the base page. So with that said, I'm, I'm thinking um, originally I had planned to install these flaps right here on the edge. And I'm going to look at um, swapping the paper around to see which way I like it. If I want this, the color on the inside and this pattern on the outside. So I just want to see which way the flaps look best. Ah, that's tough. I like it both ways. I'm going to swap it one more time and we'll make our final decision. When I look at the plain page, I like it best this way. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go this way. Okay, so these two are going to get installed um, centered on the outside edges of the page. This is page two and page three. And so here's the pocket edge and here's the spine edge. So we're going to attach these on the outside edges. We're going to do that first. And then we'll come back and um, locate our magnets as well as um, put in the base the base mat. So this is six inches square when it's when the flap is folded over. So you're going to need two of these, one for each page, and we're going to do both pages at the same time. I noticed that my my uh, work was going very quickly, so I'm going to try to get two pages in and still be under a half hour. So you're going to score. You're going to need a six and a half by six, six and a half by six. Score half inch on the six and a half inch side, and then you're going to have a finished panel of six by six. You're going to do that twice. So again, it's six and a half by six. Score half inch on the six and a half inch side, and then we're going to install these on the outside edges of the pocket page. And because it's six inches and then we're going to nest it on a, an eight inch page, we're going to come down an inch and that will put it basically centered on, um, on the pocket page. Okay, so one of the ways that I do that is I locate the center of the pocket page and I'll put a little tick mark and I really am missing my preferred pencil. And the reason I like my other pencil is it has a very thin um, lead. Then I'm gonna locate the center of this flap. So the center here is four and the center here is three. I'm gonna line up those two tick marks and then that should be centered perfectly. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side on page three. I'm going to turn it sideways so I can see my edges. Okay, so that's in. So we'll do the same thing on page three. Got my tick marks. We're gonna line these two things up. Okay, so again, these are on the outside edges 
of page two and page three. Okay. Now we're going to add some magnets and um, to hold these in place, and then we'll work on putting our mats, our base mats in, because our magnet's actually going to go onto the base itself. And there's a magnet on the other side that it's being drawn to, both of them actually. So I'm going to try to move. Let's see what's on the. Okay, move it. A little off away from this one once I get paper on this side the back side and the base it's probably not gonna have enough attraction to for this one down here to be the to hold it in place so I'm not gonna count on that so I'm gonna go ahead and move it here actually I meant to be it, it's meant to be on the other side I should change that. Hang tight. We're going to put it on the inside. I, I generally prefer placement of magnets on the inside, just so you don't have that bubble uh, that's revealed. Also, it removes uh, two layers, the designer layer and the cardstock layer, uh, from in between its mate. So I'm probably going to go. I'm going to go move the other one. But depending on what magnets you're using, what size, um, one of the things that you can do is take two magnets and just put paper in between them, um, sheets of paper, designer paper, and cardstock until they won't adhere anymore. And then that's just sort of a test so you know, you know how much you can put between the two. I try not to go more than two layers, but sometimes I'll have more than that. And I'm just going to pull this up and move it. And because I pulled at an angle, it only took a little bit of the paper with it. So something to keep in mind if you ever need to remove your tape. I also had not burnished it, so that's the other reason it came up. There we go. Okay, so the next step is we've got some color blocking to do here. So I think these are trimmed down to where I need them to be. I'm gonna I'm gonna dry fit. Um, so what I did is I I basically started with um, seven and seven eighths in height and four inches wide, and then I trimmed them down a little bit at a time until I got the look I wanted. And what I wound up with is. This piece is three and seven eighths across. Eight. And this one is three and 15 sixteenths. So it's almost four inches. Um, and I still, I'm not sure, I might need to trim it down. So I'm gonna start by placing my outside edge in first. And then I'm going to marry this one up. And then if I need to trim, I'm going to take it off the one that's a little bit thinner. Um, I can't recommend enough that you, when you're color blocking, that you trim to fit. Um, do a rough cut to set the paper aside so you don't cut into it. But you really need to trim it to fit. If you don't, you're going to be unhappy with it. You can't just arbitrarily say it's this size for both sides and, and be happy with it. So I always... Put it in, check it again, trim a little at a time until I'm happy with it. It's fussy, but in the end, you're gonna really be happy with the result. And I'm actually, I'm happy with that. So it's gonna go in just as is. That is very surprising. I thought I was gonna have to trim it, but it turned out perfect. The other thing you can do, and I've done this a lot on the inside covers, is you join the two pieces and, um, and then trim it down as a whole. And when I say join it, you 
use a piece of tape to put these two together and then put it in the trimmer and trim it as a whole um, with, without the black line in between. But I, was, I wanted that black seam, so it's, um, it's a little fussier, but I really like the look. Okay, that's in. Now, let's go ahead and cover, oh, I forgot to ink these, cover our flap. And this is from the 6x6, and I took two of the same image, and one's going to go on the inside and one's going to go on the outside. This is the inside. In this case, I actually designed the flap around the size of the paper I had. Um, because I had that six by six pad, um, I wound up uh, designing some flaps that would use that whole piece because it's not big enough to split in half and really do much with it. So that is how I came up with this large flap, which I love. Um, you can get a four by six and still have some room to journal underneath it or add an embellishment. Um, and, not, and the flap's not, it's got enough room for an embellishment and a photo, not one or the other. Okay, and this is going to go on like this. I might need to ink it. And if you missed it in one of my other videos, I'm using uh, Powder Puff and I'm using Mahogany, which is my favorite. I like the dark brown and I actually use it for everything. Um, but we do have some other colors. We have lighter colors. If you like to distress in uh, onto your pattern more, I would recommend going lighter. I use the really dark because all I do is really knock the white edge off the, the core of the paper. So depending on how you, your technique for distressing, to me, the, the more you go into the paper, probably the lighter you want to go. Um, anyways, oh, I think that is so pretty. So that is page two, very simple. Very simple page. And page three, same thing. We're gonna adhere this first. And I'm just sort of dry fitting, it looks good. And it's inked. Because this is just a mirror image, it's going very quickly. And it's really only one flap per page, so it's very fast. You may notice um, on albums where I do, uh, where I use collections or brands that are not graphic, that my albums tend to be a little bit simpler. And um, part of the reason is just because of the number of papers you get per pack. So with graphic, I'm always using a, a tire bundle, which is uh, two 12 by 12 pads. So 32 sheets of 12 by 12, and then 24 sheets of eight by eight. So that's a lot of paper, so I can do a lot with my flaps. Um, with these collections, you get 10 sheets per pack. So even though I'm using multiple packs, it's it, like I said, it's nothing like the graphic where you get, you know, so many sheets. And this one looks like it's ready to go too. That is remarkable. I don't know how the planets must have lined up for me there. Uh, I trimmed it offline, but I really thought I was going to have to come back and, and tweak it, but it's, it's good. And that's usually a testimony to two things, how square the um, designer paper is to begin with, and then how square I actually made my pocket page, and apparently it's pretty good. Pretty good. Because sometimes when you're covering this much area, you need to make a slight tweak. Nala, what you doing? She's nosing around in my room looking for something to entertain herself with. Okay, there we go. A little too high. There we go. It's so pretty. There's a dragonfly here. I'm not sure it's coming through on the camera, but it's really pretty. I'm gonna set this page aside. Okay, now we're ready to decorate the B side here. And that's just the flip side of what I'm gonna put on the front. Oh, it's not inked. Ink that real quick. 
Excuse me. Doesn't really have a direction, but <laughs> I'm uh, the back side doesn't really have a direction. But I'm gonna put, lay it down so that the orientation matches the front, which definitely does have an orientation. Again. The cover for this this flap is from the six by six, and it's it's not trimmed down. It's it comes, it actually is a slightly smaller than six by six, is what I have found. So my flap is actually six by six, and the paper is slightly smaller. But if the paper was six by six, I would have made my flap six and one eighth um, so I wouldn't have to trim into a six by six because there's so little paper anyway I would have designed the flap around the size of the paper all right and side by side this is gonna be so pretty okay so this is page three Here's page two, page three. These are both gonna open away from the spine. And look how beautiful that spread is. I'm really happy with that. So if you'll notice um, as you're going, or you'll notice at least on the walkthrough, as you're going through the album, each page kind of has a highlight color. One of them is uh, the reds. I've got the purples. Um, there's here, Here's a green. Um, here's the reds. So it's each one is sort of bringing in um, its own set of colors. So I, I kind of like that. So, so there's your purple page. Then we have this beautiful, what I would consider the red page. And then the following page is going to be another one that's kind of green. Um, but it also has some other colors in it. Uh, anyways, and it's, the next page is going to have... Um, the sunflowers on it. So that is it for that page. I'm going to take a break and trim out some papers and I'll be back soon to finish. <laughs>